Hello, everyone. This is Adlan Fela, Chief Analyst at Maravit Research. It's my pleasure to welcome today Maria Popo, President and CEO at the SCTE, and Janielle Morse, VP Engagement Strategy. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here today. Hi, Adlin. So Hi, Adlin. S- it's nice to talk to you. Well, it's great to have you. So CTE is the Society of Cable Telecommunications Engineers. Sorry for you know, having difficulty with the acronym here. Maria, what can you tell us about the, the this society? Yes. So let's start with the name. We are serving and supporting broadband operators, and we're rooted in the cable industry. But since then, really, we are also including even in Expo some of the fiber ISPs, and you'll see that in some of the uh, technology and the sessions that are being provided. So when people say Society of Cable Telecom, and you know that cable, there's been a lot of discussions, should we drop the name? I think that's not important. It, important is what we do and who we are. And so founded in 1969, CTE is the not-for-profit professional association for broadband operators, for vendors, and the full ecosystem of professionals who turn technology into reality. So we're powered by 40,000 members approximately and nearly 60 chapters. And we're essentially where the broadband industry is coming to learn and to lead. The way that we enable this this whole ecosystem is a strategic platform. And what we do is operationalize technology. And we align the industry through these four pillars that we focused on. And so Tech Expo is one of them. Standards is another one. Workforce development is the third one. And finally, Chapters, which is our community, is that last one. So I think that I want to say that we're the only ANSI accredited standards body in the industry with direct access to an innovation hub that specializes in wired and wireless broadband technologies, and that would be cable apps. So I, that gives you, I think, a high, you know, a high level. What I want to make sure it comes across is that Tech Expo standards workforce and chapters is connected. So a new technology might be featured at Tech Expo or existing technologies will be discussed at Tech Expo. And then standards will make sure that we can operationalize those. So let's take proactive network maintenance. That's one that's coming out soon. So standards has is updating that standard. And then what happens is that it goes over to workforce. So in our learning and our certifications, PNM is now going to be digitized as a online learning platform. And then finally, it gets sent out to the community through the chapters. So I hope that gives you an idea of what we do. That's very interesting. Just out of curiosity, do you, do your members are US only or do you have different chapters around the world or? So mostly in US and Canada, but we also have a chapter in Latin America or chapters. There's one main chapter there that has little sub chapters that are all working together through different countries. We also have one in, in Europe. And we have requests to open some other chapters in other areas. So we're going to continue expanding. So you're growing. That's great. Yes. Um, So let's dive into the second question here, which is what are the most anticipated breakthroughs in seamless connectivity and converged networks? Okay. So so convergence is the big word, right, of the year or beyond the last couple of years. So... The fact that we've moved from like multi-tech to converge platforms, so fiber and DOCSIS 4.0 and wireless and edge computing, they're all blending, right? They're all siloed, which is exciting because it's typically these, these changes that you don't see that are making the biggest difference. And so we've, we're really seeing the industry move a lot, of, a lot of areas from hardware to software. So seamless switching between access types, self-healing, auto-optimizing networks, energy-aware orchestration that's adjusting in real time. So operators are running on software platforms, you know, not just physical platforms. So that change is bringing technology out to consumers faster, and it's also doing it at a lower cost. Yeah, I guess conversions means different things to different people. You know, there's conversions right. between Wi-Fi and cellular. There's conversions between wired and wireless. 
So, you know, it's a very broad term. So true. It's What's your definition of convergence? Well, so my definition is, and it'd be interesting to hear what, you know, what like the executive vice president of engineering at one of the operators says, but my definition of convergence is using multiple access technologies to deliver services. Okay. So in the past where it might've only been HFC, now, of course, there's more fiber. There's Wi-Fi, which is actually carrying probably, what, 90% of the mobile network that the operators are providing. And then there's also wireless. So in some situations, you'll see where maybe 5G is being used for that last bit to the home. So to mm. me, that's what convergence is. That's a good answer. I think at the end of the day, it's all about customer experience, right? Exactly, uh, uh, exactly. Whatever, whatever brings that. Hello everyone, this is Adlan Fila. I'm a Chief Research Analyst at Maravidis. Maravidis is a boutique wireless infrastructure analyst firm since 2002. Over the last two decades, we have been helping customers with research, consulting, and marketing services. Some of the areas we cover include the convergence of Wi-Fi and cellular. In fact, we're known for our long-standing relationship with the Wireless Broadband Alliance, for which we have produced the industry annual report. We have three ways to work with us, from marketing essentials for startups to custom large custom projects. We can discuss those projects individually. And those are some of the customers we have helped in the past. So feel free to reach out to us to further discuss your research needs. Thank you. So Janelle Morse, your VP Engagement and Strategy. So we want yes. to hear from you. So we can't have a discuss any podcast without talking about AI, right? So how, yeah, where? how is AI expected to improve, I guess, network operations and, and the customer experience? Yeah, so to me, AI, it's reshaping how the networks respond in real time, enabling predictive maintenance, traffic optimization, personalized services. And then part of AI is automation, reducing the manual intervention and the human error, allowing for faster deployments, streamlined operations, reduced costs. This also advanced planning tools, right? We drive, drive that by big data and machine learning, empowering the network architects to forecast on de demand, identify pain points, automate, optimize resource allocation. All this, it supports, you know, you know, the face the challenges about security, scalability, operations, and fracture and deployment. And through Tech Expo, we have a dedicated track on AI. However, AI is through all of our tracks. We can't get away from it, right? This is mm. the future, right? The future is an AI powered network, right? A self healing powered network. Um, and you'll see that through throughout the agenda, not just in our AI track. You know, we have sessions, you know, that are for AI docs enhancements and real-time detection, um, preemptive equipment faults, mitigation, all that's covered across the track at Tech Expo. What's different this year with Tech Expo is we don't have as many technical papers talking about the future. What we really have is real case studies. So we have operators talking about how they're implementing their AI at their organization. So people are really learning real use use cases that are being done by the operator. So then they can take those ideas and learnings and bring it back on Monday to start trying to implement at their organizations. The importance of AI is that the operators know about degradation in the network before the customer does, right? And so that's pretty exciting. The other part of what AI enables is act, is on the technician side. So troubleshooting, where agentic AI comes into play. And we're doing work now with some of the operators that are using SCTE standards in their LMM and in the RAG layer. So they're accessing standards that have been proven to work and that also drawing in the cable lab specifications. And what that, that's done is some early tests. It's like improving their ability to troubleshoot accurately from like something around 50% to over 90%. So that's some of the other areas where mm. AI is exciting. Oh, that's exciting work. So you have, Janet, you have touched on the Tech Expo 25, mm -hmm. which is happening September 29th to October 1st in Washington, D.C. I've never been to that event. What, what can you tell us? How big is it and what to expect this year? 
Yeah. So thanks for bringing that up is so tech expo is the largest broadband event in North America. We have over 300 exhibitors, seven concurrent tracks, starting from wireline, like I talked about through AI, wireless and conversion. So all the topics we're talking about here, we cover. We also have for new, new this year is our stream tech track. So one of our most popular standards is ad insertions. And we thought it was a natural progression for us to start having a track on streaming. So streaming is now dominant form of content consumption, especially with sports. You see the Olympics, you see football games. So it's placing huge demands of broadband infrastructure. So the track that we're partnering with will address how the network infrastructure and streaming service must co-evolve, right? To meet the growing expectations. So it's low latency and high quality quality video delivery. So it's very exciting for us. It's a new audience segment for us through new companies attending, but also deepening our engagement with existing companies as well that typically wouldn't attend Tech Expo. Yeah, and you, Maria, you want to say something about the, the event? I, I think what, you know, I mentioned that, that SCTE, we've been aligning, right? We align with the operators, we're aligning with the vendors, we're being the central hub. And I think what's interesting is that we're including other associations too. So SVTA is a good example of that. Seeing You'll see more of that. You'll see more partnerships from SCT, and I think you'll see some of that being announced at the expo. So certainly come for that. You'll see, obviously, there'll be a lot of AI displayed as Janelle talked about. You will also see some of the, what you typically see at Tech Expo. So everything from hardware to software to diagnostics will all be included. And a lot of good speakers. I don't know if you mentioned, Janelle, did you say, so we normally do a call for papers and we changed that up this year. Do you want to talk, speak to sure. that? Sure. So we changed it up because we were looking for not just technical papers. So we're, we call it call for content now. And we have all different kinds of formats. We have panels. We do have our technical papers. We have workshops on masterclasses. We have a masterclass on Ingentic AI with AUS and Charter. So it's get behind the curtain kind of of how Charter works with AUS to implement Ingentic AI. And it's a hands-on session as well. As Maria mentioned earlier, PNM is important to us and we have multiple sessions, including our PNM Live, which happens every year that we'll talk about. And we have some great speakers. We have the managing director of Liberty Global who leads the mobile area. So she will be speaking on the wireless track. We also have a session on, as Maria mentioned earlier, software defined access and network slicing led by Comcast. We have the chief strategy officer from UCLA speaking as well, talking about the data insights you can gain for funding and out, um, rollouts as well. So some really exciting ones, of course, our chairman of our SCT board, Alad from Comcast, he will be doing a track keynote for our wireline track as well. So some really exciting speakers from the visionary down to the implementers across the three days. So and we have two, right? We still, we have yes, we end the last day, we do our broadband championships. So for anyone listening, it used to be called our Cable Tech Games. We've changed the name. It's now called Broadband Championships. And this is where the chapters come into play at the event, where throughout the year, they compete at the local level and they take their top winners from their regions to then play at the championship for the grand prize. So that will happen on our last day on the Wednesday. And they do a series of hands-on courses and then they play Jeopardy as well to announce the overall winner for the game. So it's really exciting. They really get into the competition and it's an exciting thing to see right on the show floor. Made the best win. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> How big is this event in terms of attendees? We have thousands of attendees that attend. Okay. Are analysts like myself welcome? Yes, analysts are welcome. You can apply for a free pass. Please do. It's on our website. Just fill in your credentials and you'll get accepted. We have a press lounge for any analysts or media that are listening where you can perpetual refreshments, a Wi-Fi connection, private meeting rooms to do any briefings with vendors or operators as well. All right. Well, thank you very much. This is super exciting. And, you know, again, I've never been to the event, but I really hope I can make it this year. And it's I great to meet to you. you there. And until the next episode, please like, subscribe and share. 
and see you at the Tech Expo. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.